hello guys let's start with the third part of the video which is error and analysis so no measurement is perfect as the error is involved in a measurement cannot be removed completely measure value is always somewhat different from the true value the difference is called error error can be classified into two ways the first classification is based on the cause of error systematic error random error fall in this group second classification is based on the magnitude error absolute error and mean absolute error and relative error well let's see we'll discuss the error one by one first is systematic error these are the error whose causes are known to us such errors are can be minimized by following like instruments instrumentals error may be due to erroneous instruments these errors can be reduced by using more accurate instrument and applying zero correction when required sometimes error arises on account of ignoring certain facts for example in measuring time period of simple pendulum error may creep because no consideration is taken of air resistance this error can be reduced by applying proper correction of the formula used change the temperature pressure humidity may also sometime cause the error in the okay so well let's discuss this error the second error is random error these causes of random error are not known hence it is not possible to remove them completely this error may arises due to variety of reason for example the reading of the sensitive beam balance may change by the variation of cost in the building due to person move in the laboratory or vehicle running in nearby the random error can be minimized by repeating the observation a large number of time and taking the arithmetic mean of all the observation the mean value would be very close to the most accurate reading so we need to find the mean we all knew that how to find the mean or average it's just nothing but the summation like a1 plus a2 plus a3 if it is up to a3 we need to divide it by 3 if it is up to an we need to divide it by an and only so that is how we need to find the average so according to the practical observation they find that if you need to find the random error you have to just find the mean or average so that is approximately equal to the exact value next is absolute error how will find the absolute error so this is the difference between the true value and the measured value of quantity is called the absolute error usually the mean value am is taken as the true value so if we we'll consider the am as a true value so let's find the am first which is using a1 plus a2 let's say up to an by n then by definition the absolute error in the measured value of the quantities are let's say change in a1 that will be equal to the mean value which is the accurate value minus a1 change in a2 again the mean value which is the accurate value we are assuming minus a2 change in a and so on will be equal to the mean value minus a n. the absolute error may be positive or negative okay now let's find the mean absolute error well this is the arithmetic mean of the magnitude of the absolute error thus nothing but the just need to find the mean of the value but remember one thing as i said you the value of absolute error may be positive or negative so we need to consider mod while finding out the mean absolute error so as you can see the formula mod of change in a1 mod of change in a2 plus 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 up to mod of change of a n upon n so the final result of the measurement can be written as a is equal to am plus minus change in a mean this is simplified that the the value of a is likely to lie between am plus change in a mean am minus change in a mean well relative and fractional error the ratio of mean absolute error to the mean value of the quantity measured is called relative or fractional error relative error is equal to change in mean upon am the percentage error can be find by same way but we need to multiply it by 100 only okay well let's see one problem you'll get better idea 
Let's see the diameter of the wire as measured by a screw gauge was found to be 2.620, 2.625 and 2.630 and 2.628 and 2.626 cm. As I said you, you have to consider an instrument, screw gauge that they have taken, they must have taken, seen this in the laboratory, in your schools or colleges, you got this value, somebody has experimented and they got the different different value like 2.620, 2.625, 2.630 and 2.628, 2.626, okay. So let's find the mean value of diameter, then we need to find the absolute error, then mean absolute error and last the fractional error. Let's see how we'll find. First of all, you have to remember the values, the formula, okay? So let's find the form using the formula first. So here we have, so that's all. So first of all, we need to find the mean value. So mean is nothing very easy. We just have to add the value and now need to count the number one, two, three, four, five. So it's a five. So we need to divide it by five. We'll give the average value, which is 2.625. And we just find it the rounded figure. If it is 0 0.8, five, eight is there. So after five, there is eight, which is the maximum than the five. So it will become the six, right? Six point two point six two six. And as I told you for addition and subtraction rounding, rounding will be like we have to consider after the point um, after the decimal there is a three values there so we have to give the value up to the three digit let's find the next am let's find the absolute error for absolute error what was that for we need to find the change in a1 that is equal to mean minus the exact a1 value for a2 mean minus exact a2 value for a3 it mean minus a3 for change in a4 a mean minus a4 so on will get this value plus minus plus and at last we got the zero so if you need to find the mean absolute error we have to find the mod of all this value and just put it here and again the mean concept if it's five is there we need to just divide it by five we'll get the value as 0 0.003 okay got it next part is fractional error for fractional error we have a direct formula that is change of mean by am and change of mean as you find it 0 0.003 and the am is 2.626 which is a mean value so we get it plus minus 0 0.001 let's find the percentage error percentage error we just have to multiply it by 100 we got plus minus 0.1 percent and we need to find the diameter of wire can be written as the 2.626 centimeter plus minus 0 0.1 percent got it 2.626 how did we get that 2.6 that is nothing but the mean value which is the approximately accurate value Okay, got it. Now let's find the combination of error. First is error in sum or difference. If it is like x is equal to a plus minus b, guys, either you can refer this the solution. How we will find this value? This is very easy. What we need to do a plus minus a plus minus b plus minus a b, or either you just to remember the direct this relation. Whenever it is will be there, you need to do just simple steps plus change in a plus minus change in b. Just have to remember this relation. Either uh, you can directly solve the problem. Whenever it is sum or plus minus, you can just change in a plus change in minus b. We'll get better idea when I solve the problem. Okay. Uh, well, let's see for this. The volume of the two bodies are measured by V1 as 10.2 plus minus 0 0.02. For V2 is 6.4 plus minus 0 0.01. So calculate the sum and difference. That was the question. So what we need to do. Just let's say v1 is there and v2 is there. Change in volume for the first one is 0.02 or for the second 0.01. Just add this value, you will get plus minus 0.003. For v1 plus v2, the normal value which is 10.2 and 6.4 will get this as 16.6 cm. Or from while subtracting, we will get v1 minus v2 or we will get this 3.8. This is just a normal addition or subtraction which can do any first or second standard students as well. Okay, the sum of the volume will be now 16.6 while the addition one and this of change in volume will remain 6.0.03 while subtracting will got 3.8 so plus minus 0 0.03. This is the sum and addition and subtraction error. Let's talk about the next part which is the the multiplication like error in product x is equal to a into b whenever it is x into a into b just remember a very specific relation which will be helpful for you it not going to uh like waste your time just use this relation at last as you can see in the picture it's change in a upon a change in b upon b okay that is going to give you the relation how we'll see 
while solving the problem got it let's see for the division if it is x a by b and it was a into b so what we did change in a by a plus change in b by b if it is a by b so we have a very quick re uh, relation for this that is nothing but let's see 1 plus minus change in a by a into 1 plus minus change in b by b how to solve this let's see here got it let's see there is the relation we have if this division is there at last we will get the relation as a so your relation will be there we have the relation change in a by a plus change in b by b if you see for the multiplication we have the same relation right for division we'll have the same relation so don't confuse whether it will be multiplication or division will have the same relation change in a by a got it plus change in b by b remember one thing if there's addition you just see we just have to add the normal part with the normal one just have to subtract normal part with the normal one and the change in volume we have to just add at the separate part and at last you'll get the summation but in case if it is multiplication or division as you can see the formula will remain same change in a by a plus change in b by b it doesn't matter okay the second let's come to the fourth part error in quantity raised to the sum power that's x is equal to a raised to power n b raised to power m so taking log on all this you will get the relation the very important relation how can you remember this just like uh, this remember one thing just like a multiplication division change in a by a change in b by b the only thing the difference is the the raised to power this is raised to power and we'll get multiplied here and then denominator the power whatever the power will get multiplied here so there is the formula let's we'll get better idea by solving this problem let's see the mass and the density of a solid sphere are measured to be 12.4 plus minus 0.1 okay the next is 4.6 plus minus 0 0.2 calculate the volume of the sphere let's see how we'll find this so here is the exact value, this is the change in value, this is the exact value which is 4.6 and the change in value 0.2. So if you need to find the volume, that is mass by density. So mass we have given which is 12.4 and the density will be here which is 4.6 plus minus 0.2. So at last, just do the normal division first. For the exact value, we got this as a 2.69. Okay, let's see. Now we'll find using the formula. How we'll find this? For this, what we need to do change in volume upon m change in uh, mass upon m change in density upon m that is the uh, our formula so let's use the same concept and last this volume will get multiplied here okay so change in m what is change in m the m is here 0 0.1 and what about the m this m is the exact value which is 12.4 just put it here you'll get this value right this plus keep this as it is what about the density the exact dense change in density is 0 0.2 so we'll put this 0 0.2 and there it is the exact value of density which is 4.6 we'll just put that value and at last what about the volume then the volume is nothing but 2.7 we find this value from here volume is equal to mass upon density which is 2.7 we got this value 2.7 here and we'll get this value as a plus minus 0.4 so the volume will be exactly 2.7 plus minus for this change in value okay you got it should i repeat this i just see this we got the mass is there mass plus minus m so 12.4 plus minus 0 0.1 there is the density given 4.6 plus minus 0 0.2 we have the formula for density is equal to mass by volume from there we can write volume is equal to mass by density we get the exact value for the the change in volume we use this formula we have already discussed earlier even if you find it any difficulty just pause the video go through slowly slowly you'll we'll get a bit ready in case even if you have some more doubt then comment me on the given comment box on the video below okay i hope now it will be quite easy for you let's talk the then after we have some important topics which we have covered a summarized point of view the key concept key term concepts which are very useful for you msg stand for main scale division or vsd stand for vernier scale division step of problem is there in the next video of this unit and dimensionally cover the solve example which is very important so guys please subscribe it or like it if you like this video this is going to be very helpful for you for the solve example the next coming video will be very very helpful for you just keep watching thanks for watching kindly like this video or subscribe me on my channel thanks a lot for watching this video